Welcome to Purdue's Chemistry Lab Safety Tutorial. This tutorial will prepare you for your lab by making you familiar with basic lab safety procedures. The topics you'll cover are listed to your left. In exploring the lab, you will tour a virtual chemistry lab, learning about many of the features found in your Purdue laboratory. Next, in the What to Wear topic, you can test your understanding of what is and is not safe to wear in the lab by helping your virtual lab partner, Sylvia, pick out appropriate clothing to wear for her lab. Then in the Safe Lab Practices topic, you'll learn 12 very important rules for handling chemicals. The Emergency Scenarios topic will then give you the opportunity to put all this information together in facing some lab emergencies. Note that this tutorial is designed for Purdue's general chemistry students. If you want to learn more, consult the Chemical Hygiene Plan found on the Radiological and Environmental Management website. Click Next to begin exploring the lab. Welcome to Purdue's Virtual Chemistry Lab. Part of staying safe is knowing your way around your lab and being aware of the safety equipment provided for you. Let's take a look around this virtual lab and become familiar with its features. You will find this very similar to your own lab at Purdue. To begin your virtual lab tour, let's take a look at the lab bench. The lab bench is where you will conduct the majority of your experiments. On the first day of class, you'll be assigned a specific station on the lab bench, which you will use throughout the semester. Each lab area has access to gas, electricity, and water. Of these features, you should pay particular attention to the gas outlet. Keep sources of ignition away from the gas outlet and make sure it's turned off when not in use. Also, be aware of any natural gas smells at your lab bench. This could mean the outlet is on or leaking. If you continue to smell natural gas after you've turned off your outlet, report it to your teaching assistant. You should also be very careful about what goes down the drain. Many chemicals you use in class require special disposal and should not be poured into your drain. Special waste containers will be provided for disposal of these chemicals. These containers will be located in the first main hood. When handling more volatile, odorous, or flammable chemicals, you will be directed to work in a student bench hood or in one of the main fume hoods. A fume hood is an enclosed workspace that protects you from gaseous substances by drawing air from the lab into the hood and then venting the air outside. When used correctly, fume hoods prevent flames and hazardous gases from escaping into the lab. Student bench hoods are located in the cabinets below the four main fume hoods. Your teaching assistant will show you how to set up the student bench hoods. When using one of the main hoods, keep the sash at the lowest level that is indicated on the side of the hood. Also, always work at least six inches inside the fume hood to further ensure that no gases can escape into the lab. To make sure the fume hood is working properly, hold the end of a strip of paper inside the hood. If the other end of the paper is pulled further into the hood, away from you, then the fume hood is probably functioning properly. Notify your teaching assistant if you think there may be a problem. Both your lab bench and the fume hood have a water source with a drain. Besides this, there are also several sinks in your lab. Use sinks to wash your hands and to rinse your glassware at the end of the lab. There is a faucet for deionized water in the area of the front main sink. Use deionized water for a final rinse of glassware and for chemical reactions. As with the other drains in your lab, do not pour leftover chemicals into the sink. Dispose of chemicals in specially labeled waste containers. These waste containers can be found in the first main hood. Always read the label found on these containers to make sure that you are using the correct waste container. Material placed in these waste containers will be removed for environmentally safe disposal or for recycling. If you ever have any doubt as to where to dispose of something, ask your teaching assistant. Now let's turn our attention to a very important but often overlooked part of the lab, the floor. 
You must keep the floor clear of book bags, purses, coats, and any other items your classmates could trip over while walking down the lab aisles. Because people will often be carrying glassware like beakers and test tubes, tripping could lead to a serious injury. To keep the floor uncluttered, you must store your personal items on coat racks at the front of the room. Another way to prevent slips and falls is to wipe up spilled liquids immediately. If you need assistance, ask your teaching assistant. If the spill contains hazardous chemicals, always ask your teaching assistant for help. It is also important to keep broken glass off of the floor. If you drop a piece of glassware, bring it to the attention of your teaching assistant. The teaching assistant will show you where to find the broom and dustpan and where to discard of the broken glassware. Now let's look at some very specific safety equipment located in the front area of the lab. One of the most obvious features at this station is the safety shower. To turn on your safety shower, simply pull the hanging handle. Safety showers can be used to extinguish fires on people. If you or your clothing catches fire during the lab, it is your choice whether to get under the safety shower or to drop and roll. Safety showers can also be used to rinse off large quantities of chemicals that have spilled onto someone's skin or clothing. In the event that you spill large quantities of chemicals on your skin or clothing, stand beneath the shower and pull the shower handle. Avoid big spills like this by handling chemicals in small quantities. The eye wash can be used to help remove chemicals that have gotten into your eye. You can activate the eye wash by pushing the attached lever. A gentle flow of water will then stream up. Put your eye in the water, holding your eyelid open for several minutes to wash out the chemicals. Always wear splash goggles when working in the lab to prevent getting chemicals in your eye. The lab is equipped with a fire extinguisher. Look around your lab and locate the fire extinguishers, which are marked by a red sign. If there is a lab fire, your teaching assistant may use the fire extinguisher to put out the flames. In the event of a fire, evacuate the lab through one of the four lab exits. Two of the exits lead to the hallway and the others lead to the adjacent lab. Know the location of your exit so you can evacuate the lab quickly in case of a fire or any other emergency. That concludes your virtual lab tour. Before moving on, let's recap the most important safety information from our tour. You will conduct most experiments at the lab bench. Keep the gas turned off when not in use. Keep all sources of ignition away from the gas outlet and be careful not to spill or drop chemicals into your drain. You should use a student bench hood or one of the main fume hoods when working with volatile, odorous, or flammable chemicals. Remember to work at least six inches inside the fume hood. Use your sink for cleaning glassware after experiments. Do not pour leftover chemicals into the sink unless your teaching assistant tells you to do so. Use the specially labeled waste containers to dispose of chemicals and other products unless your teaching assistant directs you to do otherwise. Keep the floor uncluttered and free of liquids that could cause someone to slip and fall. Use the safety shower or the drop and roll technique to extinguish a fire on yourself. Use the eye wash to help remove chemicals that have splashed into your eye. Avoid getting chemicals in your eyes by wearing approved splash goggles while in the lab. Your teaching assistant may use the fire extinguisher if there is a lab fire. Know where the exits are located so you can find them quickly in case of an emergency. The next topic will discuss what to wear when working in the lab. Now that you are familiar with your virtual lab, it's time to meet your virtual lab partner, Sylvia. It's only Sylvia's first day of class, but she's already making a big mistake by not dressing properly to protect herself from potential harm in the lab. Help Sylvia select appropriate lab clothing by clicking on her head, shirt, and legs. As you click, you will see different options from her wardrobe. When you think you've found the clothing that will give her the most protection while working in the lab, click Done.
Sylvia is now well dressed for working in the lab. Let's take a moment to review her clothing and understand why this is the best option. First, you should avoid any clothing or accessories that are baggy or that hang very loosely from the body. This includes hanging sleeves, big sweaters, puffy coats, dangling earrings, long necklaces, and flowing skirts. Items like these could more easily catch on fire, fall into chemicals, or knock over equipment. For the same reasons, hair that is shoulder length or longer should always be tied back when working in the lab. Secondly, if there is a chemical spill or splash, it's better for the chemical to land on your clothes than directly onto your skin. Therefore, you should always wear long pants, shirts that cover your abdomen, shoulders, and arms, and closed-toed, closed-heeled shoes when working in the lab. It is not appropriate to wear shorts, skirts, capri pants, tank tops, sandals, flip-flops, or clogs, and these items should never be worn in the lab. It is also recommended that you avoid wearing synthetic fabrics such as rayon and polyester, which burn faster than natural fabrics like cotton or wool. If your clothes catch on fire, you have more time to react and put out the flames if you're wearing fabrics made of natural fibers. Lastly, and most importantly, since your eyes are extremely sensitive to chemicals, you should always wear your splash goggles while in the lab. Splash goggles will protect your eyes from spattering chemicals that could easily land in them, causing damage and discomfort. Plus, they prevent you from unknowingly transferring chemicals from your hands into your eyes. Now that you're familiar with the safety features of your lab and the clothing you should wear when performing experiments, you're ready to learn some safe lab practices that will protect you and your classmates from harm while working in the lab. The next topic goes over simple practices that will help you prevent accidents. To do this, we will say goodbye to Sylvia and turn our attention back to the lab. Now it's time to discuss a few lab rules and safety protocols that students like you, as well as professional laboratory researchers, should always follow in the lab. Abiding by these rules will help you handle substances safely and minimize your chances of getting hurt. Always wear splash goggles when working in the lab. Do not eat or drink in the lab. In fact, food and drink should not even be brought into the lab. Also, do not chew gum and do not bite on pens, pencils, or fingernails. Work in a student bench hood or one of the main hoods, as directed by your teaching assistant, when handling volatile liquids, odorous compounds, or flammable materials. Use spatulas to handle solids. For small quantities of solids, use a spatula to transfer the solid from the reagent bottle to a flask or beaker. To reduce spills, use a beaker as an intermediate container when pouring liquids from a large container into a small container. Because beakers have large mouths and spouts, they're easier and safer to use. Never force anything into glassware and never force glass, such as a stirring rod, into anything. Failure to handle glassware properly can result in serious injury. Point containers away from yourself and others when heating them or when mixing chemicals. If there is a reaction, it's less likely to do harm if the container is pointed away from you. To prevent burns and spills, never reach over flames, bottles, or hot equipment. Keep lighted Bunsen burners away from flammable liquids and never leave them unattended. Always assume a heated object is hot. To be certain what chemicals you are using, read labels twice before taking anything from a bottle. An unwanted, potentially dangerous reaction could occur if the wrong chemical is used. Wear gloves when appropriate. Always remove gloves before exiting the lab. If you must leave the lab to use the restroom or visit the storeroom, remove your gloves and put on a new pair when you return. Always wash your hands when you leave the lab. This will prevent you from transferring chemicals or other harmful substances from your hands to your mouth and eyes. For the same reason, avoid touching your face. Do not use your cell phone 
and never apply makeup in the lab. Though these rules should be sufficient for your purposes as a student, you can learn more about the handling procedures and toxicities of specific substances by referring to the Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. Copies of a specific MSDS can be obtained by searching online or contacting one of the Prep Lab staff in Brown 2151. Following these safe lab practices will prevent accidents from happening and keep the laboratory safe for you and for your classmates. Because these safety protocols are so important, let's have a quick review before proceeding to the next topic. Wear splash goggles when working in the lab. Do not eat or drink in the lab. Work in a student bench hood or one of the main hoods as directed by your teaching assistant when handling volatile liquids, odorous compounds, or flammable materials. Use spatulas to handle solids. Use a beaker as an intermediate container when pouring liquids from a large container into a small container. Never force anything into glassware. Point containers away from yourself and others when heating them or when mixing chemicals. Never reach over flames, bottles, or hot equipment. Keep lighted Bunsen burners away from flammable liquids and never leave them unattended. Read labels twice before taking anything from a bottle. Wear gloves when appropriate, and always wash your hands after your lab. Now you're almost ready to begin your lab. Following the safety precautions mentioned in this topic, and wearing the appropriate clothes outlined in the previous topic, should greatly reduce your risk of injury in the lab. However, no matter how careful you are, sometimes accidents still happen, and you should know how to deal with any emergencies that arise. The next topic will cover three laboratory emergencies that you should know how to handle. In this topic you will respond to three lab emergencies. To do this you will need to apply the safety material from the previous topics. Let's get you started by reviewing a few of our virtual lab features the sink, floor, eye wash, emergency shower, fire extinguisher, and exit. Scenario 1. The sleeve of your sweater catches on fire. By the time you notice the fire, it has spread and become quite large. What should you do? Click on the area of the lab where you should go to handle this emergency. When you have a fire on your clothes or body, you should immediately either drop to the floor and roll or go to the safety shower. Once the fire is extinguished, you should chill any burns with cold water and seek medical attention. Even if you believe the burns are minor, emergency personnel will be summoned to assist you if warranted. Answer the question on the next screen to make sure you understand how to prevent accidents like this from happening. This accident could also have been prevented by wearing appropriate clothing in the lab. Remember, bulky clothes like big sweaters can come into contact with flames more easily than a shirt with fitted sleeves. Furthermore, natural fabrics like cotton are not as flammable as synthetic fabrics and will not catch on fire as easily. Scenario 2. As you are pouring a liquid, you are bumped and the liquid splashes into your eye. What should you do? Click on the area of the lab where you should go to handle this situation. If you get a strange substance into your eye while working in the lab, you should wash it out immediately. 
Though you may not know right away if the substance is harmful, don't take any chances. Rinse your eye for 15 minutes using either the eye wash or the sink. Hold your eye open so water can clean the underside of your eyelid where chemicals may be accumulating. Rinse the skin around your eye to rid the area of chemicals from the splash. Emergency personnel will be summoned to assist you if warranted. Luckily, accidents like this are very preventable. Answer the question on the next screen to make sure you understand how to keep this from happening to you. Scenario 3. While you're working in the lab, you hear a loud noise behind you and turn to see a fire on the other side of the lab. What do you do? Click on the area of the lab where you should go when facing this emergency. If there is ever a major fire in your lab, you should evacuate the lab through the nearest safe exit and notify your teaching assistant about the emergency. Remember that if the lab is filled with smoke, you will need to crawl on the floor to prevent smoke inhalation. Because of the safety precautions taken by Purdue's chemistry department, an accident like this is very unlikely. That concludes your chemistry lab safety tutorial. We at Purdue want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about your lab and how to handle potentially dangerous chemicals. We feel this information will be very useful to you as you work in the chemistry lab and we are confident that you will have a safe and enjoyable semester.